Ah, uh, here we go. Yes, sir. The boys are back in town. Welcome to Rap, Rap Sports, Sports News, News RSM podcast. podcast, baby. Yeah, another week, episode four. Here we are. Man, it's been a rough week. It has. It has. You know, um, it's been a terrible uh, event that took place again. Once again, another mass shooting here in America, sir. In Uvalde, Texas, shooter walks into a school and ends up killing over 23 people. Yeah, it's it's crazy because, like, I talk to people um, who are not from here, and they a conversation I had was, it was like, wow, you know, there's a lot of shootings here in America, like where I'm from. You know, we don't have this many uh, shootings and things like that because the... Um, background check and the process for for getting a firearm is a lot harder. Yeah. They gotta they definitely gotta start doing more the universal background check, you know, figure out where someone's mental health is. And if someone walks in there and they're buying all this artillery and they're trying to get all these bullets, then some type of flag needs to be raised. Yeah, man, I think this is a conversation that needs to be had around the world because, it, see, this is a thing. I don't want it to become, um, you know, everybody who's for guns versus everybody who's against guns and, you know, guns are bad and, or, you know, back and forth. You know, I, since I was younger, I always believed that, that guns didn't kill people. People kill people because you got to make that, that choice to pick up the firearm and, and, and do what you want to do with it, right? So, yeah, I still stand by that. At the same token, I just feel like we can do a better job of the process to, to obtain a firearm to make sure people have um, are in a right, stable mind uh, and should actually have it, you know? Yeah, and kind of hoping that it doesn't, it's not one of those brief moments of silence and then we just move on to the next one. Like at some point we gotta figure out, okay, what do what do these people that are doing this, who are going to these stores or schools, malls, parks, what do they have in common? What's going on that they're looking at their environment like everybody's an enemy to them? Yeah, it's it's definitely a uh, mental health check needed for sure. Um, it it gotta be some kind of mental health requirement check, something. Um, it has to be done. I mean, you got to think about it. Who, who, what person in a, in the right mind, uh, right frame of mind would go into a, a school and kill children? Right. You know, you know, who wakes up and says, you know what? I think I'm going to do this today. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a, it's, it's a, it's a really sick mindset. I don't know how to even put myself in that mindset. Yeah, and I know, you know, a lot of the news coverage, everybody's been talking about this, things like that. But I feel like, you know, uh, a couple things. One, Steve Kerr, his 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 pregame interview, when he, you know, shared his, his thoughts on it, and he was just basically saying, like, you know, he felt like the country and, the peop- and us as a people were too um, used to it, to where it's like a moment of silence, we're like, oh, this happened, and then we move on. Right, he's like, we got to play a basketball game tonight. Like, that just shows you that, you know, it's it's. I feel like people are just too used to violence now. Yeah, it's definitely been desensitized. Uh, they play it day and night on movies, music, video, video games. games. Yeah. But I don't think that because all of us grew up on these these movies and you know we grew up on Mortal Kombat and Terminator movies and we're not out here rampaging in our 30s 99 percent of us aren't so I don't necessarily blame it on that I think some of these younger guys they get caught in this algorithm online of watching the same thing that makes them angry so they're sitting there for like a year two years watching these whatever like reddit they're on you know, talking to them day and night about, oh, these people are bad, and this is why they're bad, and this is why they hate us, and this is why we hate them, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And it's, uh, you know, 
it's uh it's there's a lot of um pieces to this puzzle because like you said, one, we gotta follow the trends, um, the kinda the the people who fit the profile. But then you you know, you got people who uh go fly under the radar. Like we were talking about the conversation earlier. There's people who uh get jobs, right? <clears throat> who not necessarily were ever caught as a criminal, but they've been a criminal. They've been a criminal, right? So it's like almost like okay, uh, for let's say the um the shooting in Buffalo, uh the guy was it was racially motivated, you know. I don't think that I don't think that people uh associated with certain type of racially motivated groups have mental problems. Like all of these things should be like some kind of test. You know what I'm saying? Some kind of and that's not to infringe on anybody's rights and say you can't belong to this type of group or and have a gun or nothing like that, but they should be getting tracked or, or a more strenuous process. Right. Like if you post, I hate these people, and then they see that, then it's like, hey. Exactly. Exactly. The same way. We got to take fingerprints. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, yo, the same way that jobs be checking social media and all it's almost like. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, jobs, check social media and things like that. Um, even when you're back. Okay, so this is what a lot of people don't know. And I'm not going to, I can't say too much. But there, when you apply for um, a banking account, right? When you apply for a banking account, there's something called um, customer onboarding that companies do. When they onboard you, they check to see if you are a good customer. They do like um, 314A checks, 314B checks, things where they check with law enforcement, where they check with bank to bank, things like that. And some of them actually do like social media background checks, like to see if you have negative information online, like different, you know, different companies do different things. But these are just general things that happens. There's so much more background checks and, and validation checks and things like that that happen for you getting a bank account than it is to get a gun. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, it's actually easier to get a gun than baby powder. I mean, um, baby formula. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, damn, baby powder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is. Baby formula is 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 harder to come by than getting a gun. It's, it's ridiculous, yo. Yeah. Um, but definitely want to give a, a super rest in peace to everybody um, who was slain by gun violence, whether it's a mass shooting or, or, or a shooting at, at a church, at a school, at a, at a, at a graduation. People getting, you know, everywhere, everywhere. It's, it's just so unnecessary. Um, us as a people, we have to do better. Um, and also our people uh, in power, in politics, um, politically, they got to do better too, man. They got to do better too. We all got to help each other, but it got to start somewhere. It's just, I don't know. I just feel like people don't care. Yeah, I think the it's going to take people in power, people in the public, just pretty much everyone working together to figure out how we can minimize this, like, to, the, to zero. Do you think that... Is is possible? Do you think that is? I got two two points on this. One, do you think it's possible that people can be united and do something against this? Two, yeah. yeah, okay. And then two, on the flip side, you know, us being artists and we talk about rap, sports, and news. There's a lot of artists and a lot of people out there who. Um, glorify gun violence and music, right? Mm -hmm. But I saw a YouTuber, I ain't going to say his name, he was like, where are all you guys when stuff hit the fan and somebody's in your neighborhood shooting up things and, and doing this and doing that? Where are you at, you know, when when these things are happening? Where's the gangs at? Where are they, 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 they nobody's coming to the rescue. Nobody's, you know, uh, standing up against the the. Um, domestic terrorists, all these people who say they, they pop their guns and all this stuff. Um, 
what do you what do you think about that? Like, what do you feel? Like, you feel like it's like a lot of hypocrite artists out here too who will be like, "Yo, I do this, I do that," but they don't do it for or or do or would you even expect them to do it for a good cause? Like, uh, stop the violence if yeah. that's what they rap about. Yeah, no. So it's like. If a lot of artists are out here saying how they get active with their guns and they do this oh, and they yeah, do that, okay, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. But then somebody come into their community and their neighborhood, like so for example, the the Buffalo thing. And but nobody in the hood or in the neighborhood ran up there and was like, yo, and, and took him out before he could even get out of there, before the cops could even get there. Right. Um, I think for a lot of those people they they're just doing it for the clout, majority of them. I'd actually say like 90% of them are, you know, making that type of music or saying those type of things for clout. And when those real situations do come down, they they would think of it as not their job to do anything about it. Yeah, because I was, I was, um, and it's a good conversation because I, I was seeing, um, this guy, he was, he made a really good point. He was like, you know, and just in general, not even saying just in the black communities, in all communities, where are the heroes? Where are the, the, you know, he, he referenced like superheroes, like Captain America, Black Panther, da, da, da. Where are the people who are going to stand up and be the, and be the leaders and, and say, yo, not on my watch, like this ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? No, but also understand, Safety too, right? Because that's also on the school. Because that he came through a door that was unlocked at that school. But there's certain schools out there. It takes like two gates for you to walk through it. Word. And they see everyone that goes in and out. Some of the schools they have these little like smoke bombs in the ceiling, so they can see where someone's walking around, and they release the smoke to kind of like cloud their vision and stuff. So these are like super rich, richy rich areas. That's all. That gets into it. That, that takes the conversation even further now because now you got the, you know, I don't want to say rich versus poor, but the wealthy versus the less wealthy. You could say, you could say, pri- uh, not priority, you could say privilege. You could say, you could put it a lot of different ways, but yeah, you're right. Because there, that's why I was saying it can be stopped because there's some schools where that's never going to happen. It's not at all. Like the chances of it happening is like maybe at tops 3%. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. All right, well, to segue with this uh, topic of these mass shootings, Beto Rourke, hopefully mm-hmm. I'm saying his name right, uh, he he walked into the uh, the meeting they were having after the shooting and whatnot with the, uh, what was it, the governor or yeah, mayor? the governor. Governor of Texas, and um, he confronted him about what's being done to prevent these things from happening. And it was a big uproar about that because, you know, some people were saying, like, he was out of line. Um, the timing was bad. I mean, what you think about all that? Yeah. Um, I understand it's a sensitive time for sure. Definitely right then because the families were trying to figure it out. But at the same time, I was thinking, like, when would the right time to say something be? Like, it's very – this is happening now. That's what he was saying. Like, the shooting's happening happening now. So what was he going to talk about it? Like, are we going to talk about a month from now, two months from now, next year? Like, this is going on right now in our country, and it's getting very bad. Yeah, 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 I I agree with that. I agree with that Um, because, you know, I feel like I feel like this. Yes, it's fresh. Yes, it's happening now. But the more people run from the topic, the more it's going to be uh, able to be talked about again because it's going to keep happening until you do something about it, right? Yeah. So it's like, Someone's yeah. Somebody's got to clean the mess up. Somebody got to clean the mess up. And a lot of times it feels like it's so easy to say, let's live in the moment and mourn. But once the mourning's over, there's still nothing done about it. Mm-hmm. So... You know, I, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Um, I wasn't mad at all that he did that. I think he had the right intentions. It was just weird timing, I think. And weird timing, one. And two, he was by himself. Yeah. 
strength in numbers, I feel like if he would have came in there with a group of people, it would have looked better. Right. Instead of because when you come in there by yourself, it looked like you it's about you. <clears throat> it's part of me. It looked like like he was being selfish and he was trying to get the attention on him at the wrong moment. Right. And that's why they kicked him out. Yeah. But but the parents the parents, of course, or whoever, all those people who are in the room, and I can't even say the parents because in that moment, the parents you can't you can't even imagine how they would feel in that moment, you know. Right. So leave the parents out of it. I would say the people, other people in that room, you know, they um they should be just as mad as uh as Beto Rourke. They should be just as mad as him. They right. shouldn't, you know, if it's like this. If you're not as mad as him, you're condoning it. Mm. If you think about it. If you don't want change as much as he wants change, you're condoning it. Hard to argue that. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like, okay, is Beto work wrong for saying something needs to be done and what's happening? No. No. If you're mad at the man who's confronting you for saying something needs to be done about this, then are you for it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you for the violence? I think I think what people's argument against him is is that it was a time for the parents. So I think that's where they're trying to say it was bad. Like I said, it was just the timing. Yeah. That's the that's the problem that they have. Yeah, it's um and then also I guess you the the only other argument I could I could say like what that is do it when the parents are not there, but I mean I'm sure he didn't know the parents was there. I'm sure he probably figured it was just a I don't know. I don't know what he knew what he didn't know. I don't want to speculate. But um it's just a terrible situation all the way around, man. I think um, at the end of the day that uh, not just Texas, but all 50 states need to do something. Uh, I just hope that the something is um, constructive and not like a random, let's throw a curfew on all 50 states. You know what I'm saying? Like just some stupid, something stupid because a lot of times when – mass events or, or things happen that's unfortunate, we get emotional as people. And then they just throw out random things that is not going to stop it. Okay, you put a curfew, so it's just going to be more shootings during the daytime. You right. see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, it, I don't know. It's it's no Band-Aid for this. It's, it needs to be something more. Yeah, they got to they gotta put their heads together. Yeah. But people got to come together on this one, and we got to really sit down and figure this out over time. Really, I think it starts with uh figuring out what's up with these guys, man. Because there's always some young teenager, some young 20-year-old doing this. Yeah. Yeah, we got to do better as a people. If you know somebody out there who ain't right in their mind, not even being funny. If they're not right in their mind, if they if you notice they off track, if they super quiet and they, and, they, and they just not themselves, man, talk to them, reach out to them. You know what I'm saying? Let them know it's more to life. And go outside and touch some grass. Get off the internet. Yeah. After you watch this episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> but speaking of going outside, man, I guess people ain't going outside to some of these stores like they usually are. Nah, so let me touch on that. So first quarter 2022, Walmart said they lost money. Target said they lost money. Amazon just said they lost money. So the thing that these stores have in common is that they provide mostly to the middle class, which means the middle class really isn't spending money like that right now. Yeah, and what the um, so-called, they say, food shortage coming and the gas prices rising, I don't really see how people have to be spending more money in the upcoming month. So I don't know. I mean, it's like, I feel like, what do you think is another domino effect? Okay, people who's not spending money, so the stores are... Losing money as a result, prices go up. 
and shortage on certain things. I mean, what you think? I think uh, I think a lot of stores are about to start cutting people, sending people home, mm. or even uh, some might have people retire early. Yeah, and then that's another domino effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a serious thing, man. Um, this is it's like for every action is a reaction, and I'm just hoping that you know we can figure it out. Um, and you know that's the thing. I I hate to say I'm hoping, um, but I have faith that, that things will be figured out. But we we can't. We got to stop hoping. We got people got to take action. It's got to be some type of action plan. Um, but even with these companies, it's like, you know, a lot of times they say the rich get richer and this and that. All right, show your employees that you care by telling them this is the course of action. If we, if our projections keep going down, downwards, this is what we're going to do to adjust. Right. At least give people a heads up or something. Right. I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> no, nah, that's, it's too much like, right. I think, uh. Some people are going to show up and the light's going to be off. Ooh, yeah. Um, and it's unfortunate, man. You know, um, we're, 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 we're definitely thinking about everybody out there who's feeling it or who's going to be feeling it. Just uh, plan ahead, y'all. Definitely got to plan ahead and get your exit plan ready. Yeah, that's definitely important. Speaking of exit plans. Oh, man. And entering plans. Um. Well, the Warriors, back to the finals, baby. Six finals in eight years. Golden State Warriors took it this past week against the Dallas Mavericks. Um, And they're just waiting. We got a game six, or I'm sorry, game seven tomorrow between Boston and Miami. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a good one. You know, Draymond said he he called uh, Boston. He feel like they're going to be playing Boston in the finals. What you think? I don't know. It's too hard. It's too hard to pick between those two since they're like three and three right now. Like, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy because oh, so it's like every game is the last game was pretty much like the I think one of the closest games I believe if I'm not mistaken. Like it's it's been one sided, lopsided. So like when Boston when it's been lopsided, when Miami been when it's been lopsided, and so yesterday, uh, Miami won in Boston. And now game seven's in Miami. And I, I think Boston's very capable of winning this game. Uh, but Miami is also dangerous at home. So, I don't know. It could be one of them things where the pressure's on Miami at home. Oh, yeah. They got to impress their city. Right. And Boston's on the road, and they got that edge on them. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm pulling for Boston. I wouldn't be mad if Miami won, but I'm, I'm pulling for Boston. Make sure you send the strippers to Boston's locker room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see NBA Finals coming next week. I think they actually start on Thursday. So I'll be back. Uh, we'll be back next time with a uh, recap on who won game one of the finals. Yes, sir. Any closing thoughts? Man, everybody out there, uh, wish you well. Stay safe. Um, definitely like, share, subscribe. Uh, we're going to keep bringing content. Rap sports news uh, each week. And, um, you know, we do it for y'all out there, man. We want to keep y'all uh, in tune with what's going on and, and entertain at the same time. Um, but be safe out there. Make good decisions. Yes, sir. Spread more love, guys. More positivity. I'm Canary Valens. Slice.